Welcome back to Midpoint. The former Director of Compliance and Security at Southern Research, recognized expert on biosafety, bioterror, and bioweapons, Deborah Sharp. Deborah, I wanted to get your opinion on the U.S. military because as they bring their own people back from Liberia right now, they are effectively under a quarantine. The Pentagon won't actually use that word, but they're putting them under a 21-day quarantine. Do you think that's smart, or is that just another one of these uh, better safe than sorry? Uh, I think it's probably a better safe than sorry approach, and, and I think the military can easily do this because, you know, these are soldiers who really have to follow uh, orders and direct command structures, and I think it's probably easier to do that with them, certainly, than the healthcare workers that are coming back from uh, West Africa. What is wrong, and again, maybe this is one of the points here when it comes down to the 21 days. What would really be wrong, though, with someone coming back from Africa, even if they are serving, and it's a wonderful thing to do with Doctors Without Borders. They're serving in an area. They know that there's a possibility. Wouldn't it just be smart for somebody coming back to say, raise their hand and say, I was there. I don't mind being there for 21 days. I know it's not really something that I want to do, but isn't it the smart thing to do to protect a possible population from a virus infestation? Well, you know, again, I do think that the problem is that it's a shifting landscape. So when a lot of these individuals said that they would go, they didn't expect to be quarantined upon their return. And, you know, there may be some um, individuals that expected to do things when they returned or have things that they had planned. Uh, I know some states are offering to pay for them to stay in quarantine, so that may make it more palatable for a lot of folks. But again, I think the whole problem goes back to it's a shifting landscape, mm -hmm. and people didn't know really what they were signing up for when they said they would go. And I think um, every time CDC comes out with another guideline, it just muddies the water and confuses the general public significantly. I want to get back to the military then. What's your take on the new machine, I guess is a good way. It's a polymerase chain reaction PCR screening machine called the Film Array that the military has been using to fight the disease in Africa. The FDA just approved this for use in hospitals this weekend. It had just been a research hospital uh, piece of equipment only. What's your take on this? Is this, a, is this a better piece of equipment? Is this necessary? And how forward do you think this will take us in trying to at least uh, discern the disease? Well, I think it, um, it, it will be really good for uh, providing rapid tests. I mean, it's very similar to uh, what we're doing now. It just um, gets the results much quicker. So it's basically a PCR device that's more of a portable PCR instead of having to set up an elaborate laboratory. It is uh, field ready, so you can take it where you need it. Um, and I think that will help significantly. But again, we're still, you know, the trigger is if you get a fever. I mean, the human body is pretty uh, amazing in that way because we know as soon as you start uh, showing a fever, that you're starting to seroconvert. Um, but we do have some evidence that you are not um, really extremely contagious until a few days after the first onset of those fevers. So I think that that does give us a little cushion of time to get people into, into healthcare facilities and get them treated. After what we've seen here with the CDC and so much of what's gone on here, do you think people are going to, or is it really going to be a, a suffering here, a, 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 great, a, a great drop in confidence level people have about their hospitals, their doctors, little places that they go, that they are ready? I've talked to some people already who say that after what happened in the Dallas hospital, in the Texas Presbyterian Hospital, they don't know if they can trust their own hospital to be ready in case something happens again. I think that they should, should not necessarily be trusting their own hospitals. Um, you know, we have been trying, our organization, the Elizabeth R. Griffin Foundation, has been trying to contact hospitals and provide training and provide guidance. And a lot of them are just downloading their recommendations from CDC because they see it as a liability if they don't do it and if they uh, uh, do it their own way. So I, I think that that is a huge issue, yes, because I don't think many hospitals are prepared and understand the significance. Because if you're going to quarantine, and think about this too, if you're going to quarantine healthcare workers coming back from West Africa, what are you going to do the doctors and nurses that are in these hospitals treating these patients? Are you going to quarantine those individuals as well? And can they, can they you know, continue and work 
uh, in those situations and then go back to their own families. You know, it's a slippery slope. And the logic tells you you really don't want to do that. I wish we had some more time to talk about that slippery slope because that's exactly what I think we need to talk about a whole lot more. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Please come back again soon because I think that this slope with regarding hospitals is the next step that we're all going to have to look at here when it comes down to what happens in the wake of Ebola. Deborah Sharp, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. All right. After the break, a dose of reality for those who think digital ID theft is the only thing you need to worry about in this techno age. Later on this hour, Spanning the Globe takes us into the battle for Afghanistan, a war that is indeed far from over. That's coming up right here on Midpoint.